robots building cars, AI creating movies, and questions no one's ready to answer. Today, we dive into the power and the danger of AI. Stick around, and by the end, you'll know what's hype and what's pure AI dope. Okay, picture this. You walk into a factory. But hold on. Not just any factory. Yeah, what's different about this one? Instead of all those human workers, you see, like all of these humanoid robots just smoothly putting cars together, it's kind of freaky how human-like their movements are. It does sound like a scene ripped right out of a sci-fi movie. But it's not sci-fi, it's actually happening. Oh, wow, really? Where? Companies like Figure.ai are making this a reality right now. Figure.ai, huh? I've heard the name. What I find fascinating is their whole approach. You know, they're they're basically taking OpenAI's GPT, you might know it as the brains behind chat GPT, and like giving it a real body. So hold on, it's not just lines of code anymore. They're actually making it like physical. Exactly. It's like they're taking that intelligence from the digital world and bringing it into the real world. And get this, they haven't skimped on the details either. What do you mean? These robots, they have hands they could do all sorts of complicated stuff. They've got legs so they can move around all over the place. And they even have eyes that can like recognize different things. What? Seriously? Yeah. Think about it. These robots can tell the difference between an apple and a cup just like we can. That's crazy. It's like science fiction is becoming reality right in front of us. Right. And remember how I mentioned they're already working in car manufacturing? Yeah, I was kind of wondering about that. Well, it makes total sense when you think about it. Car manufacturing is a lot of repetitive, really precise tasks, and that's where robots totally shine. That's true. Humans can get tired or make mistakes, but robots, not so much. But then it makes you think, what happens to all the human workers if robots become super common? Right, like what about all the jobs? It's a big question. Some people think this kind of automation is going to lead to a ton of job losses. Makes sense, I can definitely see that. While other people believe it will create like a whole bunch of new opportunities, you know? Oh, interesting. Like what? They say this could free up humans to focus on things that require more creativity and strategy, stuff robots can't do. Hmm, yeah, that's a good point. It feels like we're at this crazy crossroads where it's getting harder and harder to tell what's sci-fi and what's real. And speaking of blurring lines, what about this whole idea of AI writing movies? That's gotta be freaking out people in Hollywood. You think? I'm not so sure. I mean, think about it. OpenAI Sora, for example, is playing around with generating entire videos just from text prompts. Imagine typing in something like a crazy romantic drama set on a spaceship, and boom, Sora spits out an amazing trailer. Wait, really? Is this for real? It is. And it could totally change the entire entertainment industry. Think about independent filmmakers who don't have tons of money for a big crew. Sora could help them bring their ideas to life in ways they never could before. So you're saying it's not just about those big budget Hollywood movies. It could actually give anyone the power to make a movie. Exactly. It's like putting the power of filmmaking in the hands of anyone with a story to tell. And it goes way beyond just movies. Oh, yeah. Like what else? Imagine scrolling through TikTok and all of a sudden you see AI generated music videos, each one unique and made just for you. The way we watch and listen to entertainment is going to change completely. That sound kind of cool, I have to admit. Right. It's exciting and a little scary all at the same time. It makes you wonder, though, what happens to the human element in all of this? Will we lose something important? It's a valid concern, for sure. But, like, maybe we shouldn't freak out just yet. <laughs> it's important to remember, AI is a tool. It's up to us, as humans, to figure out how to use it. Right, we get to decide. It's all about finding the right balance, you yeah. know, using the tech to our advantage, but also making sure we don't lose the things that make us human. Yeah. Creativity, empathy, all that good stuff. Totally. It's about keeping the human touch. And you know what? This whole conversation reminds me of something Al Annie said about this being an AI bubble. An AI bubble? What's that? It's like there's this crazy potential right now with AI, but also this feeling of uncertainty, like we're teetering on the edge of something we don't fully get. Yeah, it's true. It does feel like we're on the verge of something huge, but no one knows for sure what's going to happen. And he's not the only one who feels this way. A lot of people are comparing it to the dot-com bubble back in the late 90s. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Everyone thought the internet was going to change everything. And, well, kind of did, but a lot of those companies crashed and burned. Exactly. And now people are wondering, is the same thing going to happen with AI? Is all this hype just going to fizzle out? So is that what Alan and Eve thinks? Well, not exactly. He actually believes AI has way more potential than the internet ever did. 
but he also knows there are going to be some bumps along the way. You know, companies will make promises they can't keep, technologies will become outdated, and there will be consequences we didn't see coming. Makes sense. It's like anything new, they're always growing pains. Right. So it's not really a question of if the bubble will burst, but when. That's a good point. And that's probably why it's so important to be careful. We need to be realistic about what AI can do and not get carried away with all the hype. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And we also can't forget about the ethical side of things. It's easy to get lost in all the cool stuff AI can do, but we can't ignore the risks. Like, what if it's used to do bad things? Uh, that's a scary thought. Or what if it makes existing inequalities even worse? Or takes away our privacy. Exactly. All of those are real possibilities. Hey, want our free AI dope top AI tools that we use? Chat below. It's our live Google Sheets packed with over 100 killer tools, video, music, photos, AI voices, productivity, script writing, YouTube hacks, captions, the works, always growing, live Google Sheet, always free, AI, dope top AI tools that we use. Download and chat below. Back to the show. It feels like we're walking this crazy tightrope where on one side, we have this chance to use AI to make our lives better, to solve some of the world's biggest problems. Right, but this then on the other side, there's this real danger that it could backfire on us. We might create something we can't control. And that could be disastrous. So what do we do? Where do we go from here? How can we, like as everyday people, make sure AI is used for good and not for bad? Well, that's where Alan Annie gets really interesting. Oh, oh yeah, what does he say? He talks about how important education and critical thinking are. Like, we need to really understand how AI works, its limits, and where things could go wrong. You mean we can't just blindly trust it? Exactly. We need to ask tough questions, challenge what we hear, and make sure the people in charge are doing the right thing. So it's not just about being good with technology, it's about being informed citizens. Exactly. We need to be active participants in this AI revolution, not just passive bystanders. And there are lots of ways to get involved. There are organizations, initiatives, communities, all sorts of things dedicated to developing AI ethically. Find something that speaks to you, learn about it, join in, and make your voice heard. That's a good point. It can feel overwhelming, but we don't have to just sit back and let it happen. We can actually do something about it. Exactly. We all have a role to play in shaping the future of AI. Okay, so we've got robots building cars, AI writing movies, but what about like finding information in this crazy new world? How does that work? Well, this is where things get really interesting. Alan Enney actually thinks that traditional search engines like Google are on their way out. Seriously? Is he saying Google is going to disappear? Well, he might have a point. Think about how we use search engines now. We type in a few words, and then what? We get like a million results, yeah. and most of them aren't even what we're looking for. Exactly, and half the time you can't even tell if the information is accurate or not. It's true. You end up scrolling through pages and pages of links just trying to find that one piece of information you actually need. It's so frustrating and time consuming. But you know what? That's where these new AI powered search engines come in. Like Perplexity AI. Perplexity AI, what's that? Well, instead of just matching keywords, Perplexity actually tries to understand what you're asking. It uses machine learning and reasoning to figure out what you really mean and then give you the most accurate and relevant information possible. Oh, wow. So it's not about tricking the algorithm anymore. It's about actually getting a real answer to your question. Exactly. And it doesn't matter how the information is presented or where it's hosted. Perplexity can find it. And that has huge implications for research, education, even how we form our opinions. That's incredible. Imagine asking perplexity a really complex question like, what are the ethical implications of AI in healthcare? And it could pull information from all over the place and give you a clear, unbiased overview. Exactly. That's the kind of power we're talking about. It's like moving beyond the limitations of traditional search and entering a whole new world of information access. That does sound amazing. But hold on a sec, doesn't this raise some red flags? Like, who controls this information? And how can we be sure that the AI algorithms aren't biased or giving us fake news? Those are really important questions. And they're questions we need to be asking as we move forward with AI. We can't just assume that it's always going to be used for good. We need to be vigilant, critical, and make sure we're using it responsibly. But hey, before we get too deep into that, I'm curious, how does this even work? Like, how can an AI actually sift through all that data and figure out the right answer? It sounds like magic. Well, it's not magic, but it is pretty amazing. It all comes down to machine learning. Mm -hmm. Think of it like 
uh, teaching a computer to read, mm -hmm. but not just read, like understand information the way humans do. So like we're teaching them to think. Kinda. Perplexity is trained on these massive, massive data sets of text and code. Okay, so like all the information on the internet. Basically, yeah. And that lets it start to see patterns, you know, like relationships between words and concepts. It even picks up on like the little nuances in language. So it's not just looking for keywords anymore. It's actually yeah. trying to understand the meaning behind the words. Exactly. And get this, the more data you feed it, the smarter it gets. It can even like start predicting what you're looking for before you even ask. Okay, that is both seriously impressive and a little bit creepy, if I'm being honest. But let's get back to this whole AI bubble thing. What makes Al Nanity think it's gonna burst? I mean, is this like the dot-com bubble all over again? Well, he does draw some parallels there. Oh yeah, how so? Remember back in the late 90s, everyone went crazy for internet companies. They thought the internet was gonna like revolutionize the world. Yeah, and it did to a certain extent, but a lot of those companies went belly up pretty quickly. Exactly, and that's what he's worried about with AI. There's all this hype, all this investment, but what happens when the reality doesn't live up to the expectations? So he's saying the same thing could happen with AI. He's not ruling it out. I mean, he does think AI has even more potential than the internet, but he's also realistic. He knows there are gonna be some bumps in the road. Like what? Oh, you know, companies making promises they can't keep, technologies becoming obsolete, unintended consequences popping up left and right. So it's not a matter of if the bubble will burst, it's more like when. Pretty much. Yep. And that's why it's important to be cautious. We need to manage our expectations and focus on using AI to solve actual problems, not just chase the latest trends. It's like, don't get lost in the hype, focus on the substance. Exactly. And we also need to remember the ethical implications. Like, just because we can do something with AI doesn't mean we should. You're right. We were talking about that earlier, about the potential downsides of AI. It could be used for bad things. It could make inequality worse. It could even threaten our privacy. It's a balancing act for sure. We want to use AI to make the world a better place, but we also need to be aware of the risks and make sure we're using it responsibly. It's like we're walking this tightrope. On one side, we have this incredible opportunity. AI could solve some of our biggest problems, improve our lives in countless ways. But then on the other side, there's this real danger that we could lose control, that we could create something that ends up hurting us. It's a scary thought for sure. But it's a necessary one. We can't just bury our heads in the sand and pretend the risks aren't real. We need to be having these conversations, you know, thinking critically about the future we want to create with AI. So where do we even start? What can we do as individuals to make sure AI is used for good? Well, Alan Annie talks a lot about education. Education. Like going back to school? Not necessarily. It's more about like being informed, learning how AI works, understanding its limitations, and being able to spot potential problems. So like being AI literate. Exactly, and being critical thinkers. We can't just believe everything we hear about AI. We need to ask questions, challenge assumptions, and hold the people in power accountable. You're saying we all need to become like AI watchdogs. In a way, yeah. And we need to get involved. There are so many organizations, initiatives, and communities working on ethical AI development. Find something you care about, learn more about it, and get involved. Make your voice heard. That's a great point. We don't have to be passive observers. We can actually help shape the future of AI. But speaking of shaping the future, you mentioned this new job, prompt engineering. You said it's going to be super important in the AI world. Can you tell us more about that? What exactly is a prompt engineer? It's a pretty fascinating job, actually. You see all these AI tools like ChatGPT and Sora, they're incredibly powerful, but they need instructions, right? Okay, so what does that have to do with prompt engineers? Well, that's exactly what they do. They give the AI instructions, but not just any instructions. They craft these really specific prompts that get the AI to produce exactly what you want. It's like they're AI whisperers. So it's like learning to speak AI's language figuring out how to communicate with it effectively. Exactly. It's like learning a new language with its own weird rules and quirks. And the role of prompt engineers is only going to become more important as AI gets more advanced. Why is that? Well, because we're going to need people who can bridge the gap between what we want the AI to do and how the AI actually does it. So it's not just about being tech savvy. It's about understanding how to communicate with AI in a way that gets results. Exactly. It's a mix of technical skills and creative skills. 
A good prompt engineer needs to think like a programmer, a writer, and a psychologist all at the same time. Wow, that's a lot to juggle. Yeah. But it also sounds kind of exciting, like being on the cutting edge of something totally new. It is exciting. And the coolest part is that it's a field that's constantly evolving. We're just starting to figure out what's possible with prompt engineering. It feels like the possibilities are endless. That's true. But with all this change happening so fast, it's also a little overwhelming, you know? It's kind of scary to think about what the future holds. Yeah, I get it. But we shouldn't let fear paralyze us. It's important to remember that we have a say in this. We have the power to shape the future. Yeah, you're right. We can't just let fear take over. It's important to remember that we're not powerless in all of this. We can actually make choices that shape the future we want. That's exactly what Al Anony is getting at, you know? Al, what do you mean? Well, he ends his whole piece with this really thought-provoking question. I'm all ears. Lay it on me. He asks, what if the real challenge of AI isn't the technology itself, but us? Whoa. Okay, that's deep. What's he getting at with that? He's saying that we need to take a good, hard look at ourselves. Like, what are our values? What are our biases? What are our motivations? All of that stuff matters when we're talking about building powerful AI systems. So it's not just about making machines smarter. It's about making, like, humans better. In a way, yeah. We have to remember that AI is a reflection of us. It's a mirror to our own humanity. It shows us who they are, both the good and the bad. Okay, that makes sense. But it also kind of makes me wonder what kind of legacy are we leaving behind? Like, what will people say about how we handle this whole AI thing? Hmm, that is the question, isn't it? And honestly, there's no easy answer. Yeah, I guess not. But I do think that if we approach AI with humility, you know, and with ambition too, but also with this sense of responsibility and a commitment to doing things the right way ethically, right. then maybe, just maybe, we can create a future where AI actually helps humanity instead of hurting it. Man, I hope so. That's definitely a future worth fighting for. And if you want another AI deep dive, check this next video and ask, am I really living in these AI dope times?